This call is wrong. being recorded. Yeah, I had to turn it on so we could be recorded, bro, because it's about to go down. Yeah, now, last but not least. Oh, another fundraiser, right? Brother Hot Tim is going to get out here in the wintertime and try to run 50 kilometers, right? Now, what I'm doing is, what I'm doing is, I'm putting it out, right? And I'm going to let young people go on and, and get, um, uh, 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 raise money using me. Be, uh, and you could, you could pay per kilometer. You could do per mile, 50 kilometers, about 32 miles per mile. You could uh, say a dollar, a dime, a nickel, a penny. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? But this is my point. If I don't make it, you don't pay nothing, right? If I don't make it, you don't pay a dime. But if I do make it, you got to keep your word, right? You know, because I'm, 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 I'm one, I'm one that feels, right? I'm one that feels that if I'm going to get out there and do it, I got to complete it. I'm going for 32 miles. Now, that's, that, uh, maybe by that time I will have the past 32 miles, but I'm hitting 32 miles. And the point is, y'all can help support what we do. And it ain't just that you're giving money, right? Yeah. It ain't that you're just giving money. You're trading. You know what I'm saying? Because some of y'all are going to see me push myself, and hopefully that motivates you, right? Because if I could do 32 miles, why can't you do two? You know what I'm saying? If I my old self get out there and I could do this in some, because I was going to do it in my barefooted sandals, but after giving that some further thought, I'm going to go and get me some moccasins. Now, I'm going to be almost barefoot. Give me some moccasins. I need to cover my feet, right? Because I'm not going to go out there and, and, and die. You know what I'm saying? Then on top of that, why on my seventh, y'all y'all gonna see on the the short little video that I made about my breakthrough moment when I made my twenty miles. Um, I'll be probably posting that up um, maybe Thursday, Wednesday night, Thursday, tomorrow Thursday. Um, but uh, you'll see I ran a knot off of the bottom of my shoe, and what I found out is that um, on those long runs like that. It's very detrimental to me if I have to stop to make some type of repair because what happens is that my muscles start to cramp up and I can't run. It, it, it's, it's sort of funny because I can't just jump up and start running like I would. I had to kind of rock back and forth until I was able to get back into a rhythm to get my legs working because my legs, after I – on mile 17, after I sit down to tie the knot back on my on my shoe, my my legs wouldn't work. So I had to get up and I had to force them to move. But remember, I told you, it ain't just running. It's prayer. You know what I'm saying? Somebody needed that last three miles. You know what I'm saying? My brother that's locked down needed that last three miles. My cousin that's facing a court case needed that last three miles. My mom, who's struggling with her thing, needed her last three miles. My sister needed her last three miles. Some of your people needed that last three miles. Because when when I run, I want y'all to understand it. And this is the the ultimate. This is the I'm dropping this for free. You getting this one for free. See in Giame, there are there there are actually four types of libation. Right? When I'm running, I'm giving at least one of those. Sometimes I'm giving the highest form of libation. But one of those libations that I'm pouring, right, when I'm running, is the sweat of my brow. That's the second highest. You know, yeah, it's the second highest libation, right? Those that sweat, right? Because when I, I'm dripping, I'm dripping when I get done running. But yo, now, now it's too. Now class is in session. I done stalled long enough. It's time for us to start chopping up this this folktale, right? This folktale right here, this folktale right here, this ain't one of the best ones. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not even going to lie to you. It's a lesson in it, but it might be a quick lesson this time, all right? So hopefully y'all heard the bell. Um, we about class is in session. So a seagull. Having boated down too large a fish, burst its deep gullet bag and lay down on the shore to die. A kite saw him and exclaimed, 
You richly deserve your fate. For a bird of the air has no business to seek its food from the sea. And the moral of the story is, every man should be content to mind his own business. Now, let's talk about that one a little bit. So, let's run through it because, you know, I wanted, and this is another thing I like about these, these folk tales, right? Um, when when we force the kids to read them, they definitely get to expand on a vocabulary because they use some words that haven't been used for a long time, and you get to see where words come from because you go through the dictionary and they start looking at breaking down the roots. So they use the word gullet in here and gullet bag. You know, for those that don't know, that's like a stomach. All right. And uh, so a seagull having ate too much, bought it down, that basically means ate too, uh, too large of a fish or too much fish versus deep stomach or a deep stomach and lay down on the shore to die. A kite saw him and exclaimed, you richly deserve your fate for a bird of the air has no business to seek its food from the sea. All right, so as I was thinking about that one, right, the first thing is the kite has been used in, in some of Aesop's fables before. Now, I, I can't remember whether or not I read one using the kite, but the kite is usually, usually used in the fables as a... I don't want to say a hustler, more like a bum. Um, <laughs> it's a it's a being that is made by someone um, specifically for just floating on the wind. It 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 does not really support itself. It's supported by the wind. Um, it did made no effort to really make it up in the sky. So when you see a kite, usually what you're seeing is something that is totally under the control of something else. You know what I'm saying? A kite is like a like a slave that really serves no purpose but entertainment, right? And 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 a kite is not known for its intelligence. It's not flown for its intelligence. A kite is not known for its bravery or or its durability. You understand? A kite is a flimsy thing. It has to be light so that it can float on the wind. You know what I'm saying? So um, we got a kite judging someone, something that's empty, something that's flimsy, something that is blown about by the wind, which means that it could be going towards the east one minute, and if the wind changed direction, guess what? You know what I'm saying? The, the 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 kite is going in the other direction. So we 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 we're talking about the judgment of something that don't have a that's not known for having good sense anyway. And it looks down at this bird, right? This bird who who has been adapted to live by the sea, that lives on food from the sea, and this kite looks at the bird and says, that's what you get. That's what you deserve. It, it's looked, it, it looks at this, this seagull who, who just happened to be greedy, that, that, that basically killed itself, and the kite says, that's what you get. You richly deserve your fate. That's basically they're saying, well, that's what you get. So, kid, so, so, so grown folks, does out there listen to the folk tale? You know what I'm saying? That's a nice little wording that you can use when you wanna when you wanna tell somebody off, oh, man, you richly deserve that ass kicking, right? You know, I'm gonna use that one. You richly deserve. You richly deserve your fate. For a bird of the air has no business to seek its food from the sea. Now the question, the first question I had is, what gives the kite the route the right to decide 
or to even judge who can eat what, where, when, and how. When a kite has no ability to even to even gather food for itself, if it did eat, it's a damn kite. You know what I'm saying? So now we got this this empty being judging a being. You know what I'm saying? As greedy as it may have been, and saying that it deserved what it deserved because it did not. It did not, it, it was not supposed to be eaten from the sea. When the ver very bird that it's talking about was designed to eat from the sea. Not only was it designed to eat from the shores of the sea, it's able to fly over the water and, and fly down and grab fish up out the water itself. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about a professional fisher. It's called a seagull. It's not just a... I mean, that's the name of the story. It's the seagull. Why would you call it a seagull if it wasn't designed to be by the sea? It's designed to eat from the sea. You know what I'm saying? The one that we're talking about got greedy and it died. You right? But but what does the kite know? See, many of us in our lives, we're being guided by kites. Many of us in our lives, we are following the advice of kites of kite-like people, empty beings that have been put together by somebody else who is being pulled by some that's, that's being pulled on a string that's in the hands of somebody else that's telling you that what you're doing in your life is the wrong thing. Y'all need, need to stop listening to these kite niggas. I'm just trying to <laughs> let y'all know. I'm just trying to, you know, I, that, that's my take on it. Brother D, you got something you want? Yeah, if I if I can add, um, no, you can't add. <laughs> I'm just joking. A kite, a, kite, a kite is also a, a type of bird, but it's not a it's not a bird that deals with anything over the water. It's it's a, a bird that really does things that are more inland. It 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 captures small little rodents and and things like that. Wait, you saying a kite is a bird? Yeah. Get the hell out of here! Mm -hmm. Hold on, I'm about to. See, thank God for Google. I'm about to Google that. What? It's not an actual kite. It's a bird. Yeah. Kite bird. It's a, it's a uh, kind of a, a medium-sized bird. It's smaller than a, smaller than a falcon or or a hawk or an eagle. That's a, but it's kind of kind of like a raptor. <laughs> it's a raptor-like bird. Is it? Yeah. It's wow. a, but, it, but it doesn't deal with fishing or anything like that. It strictly is. It hunts for its meals on land. So wow. So the the funny thing is that he's talking about a a bird of the air shouldn't be getting anything from the sea, but yet it's a bird of the air that gets its food from the ground. So it's. So even even in even in that, its description is what well, wow, I think damn, and it's a beautiful bird too. Got the nerve to be talking shit about the seagull. Excuse my language. I try to keep this show clean. I try to keep this show clean. But hey, keep on going, man. I now you now you just now you just turn me on to something. So a kite a kite is a bird. Right. I thought a kite was a kite. <laughs> yes, but interesting it enough, it, it the way that it uh, conducts itself, it, it does a lot of of hovering in a, a similar place, almost as if it was attached to a to a string, if you would. It's a, but it's it's looking for mammals. Yeah, I'm refilling up on this chaga, man. I'm on this chaga. I'm on this chaga <laughs> real strong. So, so I'm looking. I'm looking at the screen, and yeah. guess what? A kite is a raptor-like bird. So now I was now. So now that brings that makes some sense now because I was looking at some of the um, old pictures of the 
of the story, and I was wondering why I couldn't find one with the kite, with the um, with a kite. You know what I'm saying? But it was because it was another bird flying above it. So oh, uh, now this brings a whole nother perspective on it because I'm thinking that it was a kite, kite, not a kite. Uh, you know, but still, still, y'all still being told what to do by some of these kite people. You know what I'm saying? Right. Let the kite people float around. T- t- telling you, telling you how to make a living. Right. <laughs> so either, so either way, whether it's the paper kite or it's the kite bird, you got a you got a bird that's inland trying to tell a bird that lives by the sea how she lives. Right. So right. you got somebody who has no perspective. Like a lot of us go to people that have no perspective on our life or our situation, and we respect their opinion. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we might have to start learning how to be honest enough to either stay away from those people be in, in, in all honesty at first, anyway, or be honest enough with people be like, yo, you don't know you don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we have to we have to start learning how to to trust ourselves, even if in that trust, because we do make mistakes, even in that trust, if we end up like the seagull on that beach. Right. Over stuff. But that seagull died doing what it knew it could do, or at least what it thought it could do. You know right. what I'm saying? It's a, it kind of, kind of makes, you, makes you think about uh, the way um, some of the wealthy uh, look at those who are, are poor. And so yeah, they got all they have this assistance and you know they they may uh fill up with it as much as they, they possibly can. Oh uh, or you know you know the mentality of you know, thinking that there there's not enough, so you gather up all that you can. Right. And so you got people that have the means to be able to go and get what they need when they need to get it, looking down on folks that are trying to gather all that they can because they don't know when the next opportunity is for them to, to be able to, to make it happen. Right. So they, so, so they, so, so their whole, as a matter of fact, if you look at the whole system, the the whole system is designed. The whole system is designed. Uh Oh, hold on. We got Miss Jacqueline. Let, uh, she want to get on a conversation. Let me go and give her the number. All right, Miss Jackie, hit us up at 614-556-4535. I'm about to uh, text that out to you as well. I'm glad I looked over here, man, so I can <laughs> see that I had a message, man. So, hey, uh, uh-oh, yeah. Come on in, Jack. Anybody else that's out there? Anybody else out there um, listening on, on Giami Journey? Hit us up. Come on in on the conversation. Um, uh, hit me up at 614-556-4535. Once again, that's 614-556-4535. Feel free to call in. Um, Hey, let's have, let's let's keep the conversation jumping. Now, one of the things, and this is what's crazy, when you look at the way the system is designed, far as helping the so-called the so-called uh, poor, you have middle class people who really can't associate. Well, actually, you have richer people setting policy that they mm-hmm. put middle class people in charge of to run to to fund the poor people. So the poor people are being helped by people who have no understanding of their plight. You know what I'm saying? And we always get those people say, hey, I understand how you feel. You know, even though they've never been in our situation, even though they've never been in your situation, just like, you know, the, the, the kite is out here right. floating around, right? The kite out here floating around trying to tell the seagull what the seagull should do. You know what I'm saying? And how the seagull should live. When we when we all know, when we all know it don't work like that. You know what I'm saying? 
Well, well, most of us don't know it. Maybe, maybe a lot of us don't know it. You know what I'm saying? You know, some of y'all need to y'all need to let those kites go. Stop listening to them. The kite is a hater. <laughs> the kite is a hater. He don't want you to succeed. He's the one that's flying over your head right now, talking about, hey, you need to stop what you're doing. You'll never, you'll never make it in this business. You'll never get in shape. You'll never lose that weight. That's that kite flying. You know, I tried that once. You know, I tried to fish by the sea. You know what I'm saying? See, we have to really, really be careful when we're on this journey, who we let around us, because, because some people, some people are just, how can I put it? They're looking for, they're looking for proof. They're looking for proof that they can't make it, right? And they need you to validate their position. So in order to help you validate your, their position, they will work to make sure that you fail. Now, they might not physically do nothing to you to stop you, but mentally, we all know that mentally, mentally, people can really mess you up. They can slow you down. You know what I'm saying? Some of us are married to, to kites. Some of us are in, in, in love relationship with kites. Some of us was raised by kites. Some of us have kite children. You know what I'm saying? Some of you know what I'm saying? And 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 and, 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 and in some ways, yo, we got to find a way, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you can love a kite from a distance. My grandma told me a long time ago, I, I, I can love you from a distance. I don't have to be right next to you to love you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because if you bring him bad into my life, I don't need you right. around me. If you ain't bringing motivation into my life, I don't need you around me. And that's sort of that's sort of like that's sort of like one of the reasons I really like doing some of my runs. Well, I like doing a lot of my runs, except when it's like time for us to do our, 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 our physical fitness test. And until I get somebody that's up on those miles, because I I, I don't want somebody around me energy because they start to falter want me to falter with them. So we get to mile five right. and all of a sudden they want to stop. You know what I'm saying? I have been I have been on runs or been working out with people where once I get into where I'm and when I get into my mode, right? Yeah man, it don't sudden, you know it don't take all of that. Man, this right. this is enough. That's you right. know we we good right here. This is this is where we should stay. This is where we, we don't need to go stay. any further. Right. Right. People only want to go where they're comfortable. You know what I'm saying? People um, I mean ain't that's the kite exactly. I, he only could go where he or she could only go where they're comfortable, right? And, and anything beyond that, anything beyond that is scary. And because it's scary, they don't want to do it. And guess what? <laughs> I don't want you to do it either because you might hey. end up like that seagull down there. Yeah, hey, but the thing about the, the seagull, although... Although it perished, he he lived in his basically he lived his life to the fullest. He was completely full to the point to where it was, he was overflow. He overflow, right? Right. He left here doing what he loved to do, didn't he? You know what I'm saying? And really, and really, isn't that isn't that how all of us talk about talked about? I see. We got to go back to when we was kids. Isn't that how we all? We thought we would like to end our lives being full and doing what it is we love to do. Seagulls love eating fish. They love eating fish. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. They love eating fish, and they love the challenge of catching fish. They love eating. They will fly up to you and snatch food out, out your hand and not even hit you, not even touch you with their beak, and they will snatch a hot dog up out your hand. I have seen it in person. You know what I'm saying? Seagulls are thorough, and they love eating, and they love snatching food from each other. You know what I'm saying? They, I mean, so the seagulls died, as you said, died full. And, the, and isn't that the way we're supposed to go out? You know what I'm saying? Isn't that the way we're supposed to go out? If we got to go out, why not go out full? You know what I'm saying? Why not go out doing what we what we what we love to do. And I know some of y'all going to be like, well, I thought you were supposed to die empty. You know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? Full, empty, they are metaphors, damn it. 
Full means you, you you full of what you was doing. Empty means you gave all you got. The bird gave all he got. He gave right. everything that he had. You know what I'm saying? He gave so much that eventually his gut fucked. You know? Right. He was he was a, he was totally into to his purpose. He was totally into what he was born to do. Without a shadow of a doubt. Right? But many of us, many of us, because of the kite existence that we live in, I'm going back to my idea of the kite before I found out that the kite was actually a bird, right? We live in a kite existence. When we go with where the wind blows, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of us, come, especially in my age grade, right, we was taught to go to college to get a job, to make money. And, and for a lot of us, in our gen- my generation, it didn't matter how we was told we were supposed to make that money. We were just supposed to make money. Some of us had a conscience, and we knew some things was right and some things was wrong, but the ultimate goal for all of us was always to get money. And this kind of stifled some of us because to get money limited actually what we could do. You see what I'm saying? Because you couldn't, uh, if, if, if I had a liking for philosophy, right? There was no network, no no support network for me to go out and, and become uh, a, a a philosopher and to pursue that. You know what I'm saying? I you, you know all the see all all the all the all the kites around me was like, man, you can't get no money doing that. You know what I'm saying? Surrounded by kites, right? They saw me eating the fish, saying, "Brother, I tell him you going that fish gonna kill you. You need to stop." You know, but the the point the point I'm trying to make, I ain't remember the point. I'm old. I don't even remember the point no more. You know what I'm saying? But the the issue is, a lot of us are living kite existences, and and in a sense, the wind that we are trapped in is not it, the the metaphorical wind that we're trapped in is how much somebody is paying. So we'll go from job to job, not even liking the jobs, thinking that it because I'm going to make a little bit more money, it's going to get better. But it seems like the more money some of us make, the worse our lives become. The sadder we become, the sicker we become, the weaker we become. You know what I'm saying? Because we're pursuing dollars rather than pursuing purpose. You know what I'm saying? Some people, and, and we don't got, some of us don't got so warped that we honestly believe that we was born to make money. Born to make money. Wow. So the creator of the universe, who has access to all wealth, basically designed you to get to get something that was man-made, for real? <laughs> Your God is that small. You see what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, it, it, it's, it's crazy, right? A whole, a whole perception has been morphed into into this little kite-like existence where we're blown around by the money. If we were told that, hey, man, you can make two point five million dollars a year shoveling shit every day. I just need you here seven days a week um, for eight hours a day. And you just going to shovel shit. I'll give you $2.5 million per year. And a lot of y'all are probably sitting out there listening to me and those of you that's going to be listening in the future because I know I'm talking to the future because uh, there's only a few people probably listening right now. You know what I'm saying? You'll be like, I'll take that $2.5 million. But you know what? My broke ass will pass. You know? I, you know what I'm saying? I, I would prefer to go and work with my kids where I give me a smile every day. And still have, I mean, you know what I'm saying? And, and that helps me through my struggle. I learn something new from my kids every day. You know, so. Um, you got anything else to say, man? I don't want to, I don't want to board, I don't want to board the people. And shit. That's it. Oh. Um, so you hit the, the nail on the, the head, the proverbial head, as they would say. Um. <laughs> Well, you know, you know, you know, just have, having that, have it really knowing when you know your purpose, and you have the uh, 
you know that that drive within you to to do what it is that you that you were meant to do. You don't hear the rest of those those other voices. You say yeah. it's, it's kind of like uh, you know white noise. You say it, it doesn't even you know enter in. It's a, but it but it takes that path of, of going through the self mastery to even get there. Right. Because for the for the longest time, it's a, it's those it's the voices of your peers. And, you know, some of the things. Sometimes I think of talking with some of the students that we work with. You know, they worried about you know what their uh, their peers are saying or what the, right. what they're going to do if I, if I stay focused on what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, you know, you get called called a name that you know you the square, you the nerd, you you know that person that's <laughs> that's not cool. Right. And so, so, and you start to think like, well, when did being intelligent and uh, you know taking care of your business become uncool? Mm. Well, now that's the question that we got to answer. See, because it ain't even just our generation. Right. It's always, it's always been, at least, at least in the culture that's been developed and and in our more culture. That has been the norm for a very long time. There ain't these smart people on plantation. You understand what I'm saying? They, you know right. what I'm saying? And for a long time, for many years, smart black men could not really produce a living. I mean, I, I'm talking about, I'm talking about a smart black man, right? Who wasn't willing to do crime? Who wasn't willing, willing to participate in? In the 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 um the 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 underground economy, yeah. Because the crazy thing is that to actually kind of to uh <laughs> to get along in this this system, you have to be just you have to be just smart enough to be able to to do the work, but not have enough uh I guess unction you know, among within yourself to be able to uh. Uh, endure the bullshit that that comes your, comes your way, right? And you you got to be just smart enough to do the work, but just dumb enough not to ask any questions, right? And be and you know what I'm saying, and, and be willing to be moved by the money. See, right. because that's 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 where they got us. We, how can I put it? it one of the things that that that, that came to me. In one of my classes in college, one of the things that I learned was that wealth in in in, in some parts of, of traditional Africa wasn't how much land or property or gold and stuff like that you had, but it was how many people you had, right? So if I'm a family leader, my wealth was based in how many people I had that was able to work the land. How many people I had that was able to protect the land? How right. many of those people respected me? That was my wealth, right? Because <laughs> to have to have the the gold, the the land, and whatever whatever else, if you don't have a means of of maintaining it, <laughs> right? What good is it? Right. So what when we came into this system, they took that over because right. the state became your protector. Rather than your family, so right. family as as we started morphing in, as we started adapting to survive in this culture, we started depending on less of the family, and now it's almost like we are totally dependent on the state. But when you come, but as you can see, because we are totally dependent on the state, our whole infrastructure as a black community is. Is 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 degenerating, right? The moors, the the Because what, what has happened is that you, what it, it, there's no longer rela- relationships being being fostered right. it and nurtured it and built. So if because if and I don't enforced. have right and enforced because if I don't have to deal with that, because there's a group of us that enforce relationships. You don't talk to them like that. You know you don't do that because there's going to be a direct direct consequence. Well, go ahead. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, so the the way it's set up is that I, I don't need to uh, 
develop a relationship with with you as you know somebody who is a, a provider of a certain service because I can go to you know Uncle Sam and and get it. Mm-hmm. So but by they, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say you know they they gonna provide provide it for me. Although I need to to give them all the information about my life and my loved ones and, and everything else. You know, after I finish that paperwork, you know I I get get what I need. I don't need to. Sometimes. To <laughs> you sometimes. Right. You sometimes get what you need, and 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 in doing and 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 that right there, like I said, we have we spend more time developing relationships with systems outside of our systems. You know what I'm saying? And and, and we become intimate with the United States with, with with the governments that we're involved with, rather being coming intimate with those that are around us. You know what I'm saying? One one of the places, one of um um what is it? Uh, silver shield, silver bullet or something like that, they have a saying, they said we are living in a time where you need to develop real friends, real skills, and real wealth. And, and hey, that's true. You know what I'm saying? Because what happens to what happens to what you own when if something, if all the lights go out? Let's say you let all the lights go out for 72 hours. Mm. What happens to all that you own? If you if you don't have the skill to to take care of it or maintain it, it perishes. Not only if you don't have, but what about if you don't have real friends? What about if your mm. friends live all the way on the other side of town? You see what I'm saying? This right. is why when this is why when Brother Hot Tim talks about building apartment complexes or or purchasing apartment complexes, I'm not just talking about you know what I'm saying, just so that I can rent it out. I'm talking about so that I can build. So we could build. So we could start building communities. Communities are already built. All we gotta do is purchase them, right? You know what I'm saying? And, and start getting, and start making sure that we get the right people in them. Because lo and behold, when 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 the crap hits the fan, the ones that are going to make it through are the ones, right? Mm-hmm. Are the ones that have true, that have real friends, real skills. And real wealth, period. You know what I'm saying? And you can, and you can protect that. And it's gonna take more than just you, right? Right. Because people right. gonna go into some real barbaric stuff. Because I want you to think about this, right? We ain't even talking about the, the government collapsing. Let's just say, let's just say uh, uh, another squirrel gets in and eat a wire. Yeah, like remember, like ten years ago, um, when when a squirrel um, blacked out, they say it was a squirrel. Blacked out the whole East Coast. You know what right. I'm saying? They said squirrel chewed a wire and blacked out the whole East Coast for almost 24 hours. Let's say something just a little bit more drastic happened. That's funny. And we happened to be in the woods when it happened. Oh, man. We, we were at camp. We were at we camp were? when it happened. Yeah. Oh. So, hey, we were surround- I was surrounded by real friends, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Come up in Simba Land talking crazy. Come on. But hey, I want to thank Brother Devin, um, or Brother um the Traveler, Brother D for joining me. I want to thank Sister Jacqueline for sending me some messages. My, that's my sister Jackie. Um she said, Can I get on in on a conversation? I yeah, girl, you can always bring it. Yeah, of course I'm gonna bring it. Come on. So you always welcome. Y'all, hey, y'all don't have to ask. Just call in. 614-556-4535. Now, we're about to get up out of here. Unless somebody else get on and want to join the conversation. But, hey, you know, because I got to get up, I'm going to try to hit hit this run because, as I told you, I got this 13-mile race coming up. I don't, I don't want to get too far out of shape. I didn't run this morning, and I didn't run this evening. So I need to do something tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Actually, tomorrow is over the hump Thursday. I mean, over the hump Wednesday. Wednesday. So I got to do some heels. So I, oh. as some of y'all saw on Monday morning, I got up and did some heels, but it was too dark. So tomorrow, either tomorrow morning, tomorrow evening, I got to hit some heels. 
You know, so now I'm put, I'm out there working out for y'all. You know what I'm saying? So y'all come work out for me. Remember the two two four process, right? Two hours a day belong to you, to your self development. Whether you pray with it, whether you meditate with it, whether you sing and dance with it, whether you write with it, you know what I'm saying? Um, whether you work out with it, you know what I'm saying? Those two hours per day are yours. You can chop it up any way you want, but you must spend. If you want a journey, you must spend. If you're in the tribe, you must spend two hours a day on you, on developing your skills. Developing your will, all right. So, this brother Hatem, um, you got any, you got anything you want to say before we get up out of here? Yes, um, with the, tomorrow being the thirtieth, just want to wish uh, Grandpa Foster happy ninety second birthday. Ninety second. Ninety second. Shoot. Shoot. Yeah, he he said he's shooting for a hundred and ten. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> I got plans. Yeah. Right. So I mean he's still still driving himself, still going uh to feed the homeless every Thursday. Uh oh he living a life of purpose. So this, oh, is, yeah. this, this is a good chance that he may make it beyond hundred and ten. You know what I'm saying? Life of purpose, man. That's 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 what we missing, man. That's what we missing. That Seagull had a life of purpose. Uh you know, even though he blew himself up. But, hey, Word. you got to take the good with the bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, this brother High Till and school is out. School is out. And with that, I say peace. Have a wonderful night. I pray that your night will be as beautiful. Or whenever you listen to this, I pray that your day or your night will be as beautiful as you are. And with that, um, I and Giami and Giami tribe and Giami journey say peace. Peace.